Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Oh. Yeah. Welcome to the Hannibal After Buzz After Show TV. After Buzz TV, Hannibal, Hannibal After, after Show. Hannibal after well, I've been doing this for three years. Yeah, I'll get yeah, it right at one whatever. point. I'm Joe Braswell. Uh, I'm joined by the lovely Julia Carley. Hi, everybody. Um, St- Stephen Lemieux, uh, Dua wants to call in. I don't know what to do. Does she call you? Do you call her? Uh, I can call her. Okay. Right, perfect. All right. So we're going to do a case in the phone shortly to join, joining us. Uh, hello, guys. Hello, GBNF and Kat. And sorry we're so late in starting. It's a crazy schedule. We're, we're, we're starting at 1 and we're late. But thank you for joining us in the chat room. Um, Hades Fist and uh, Asphyxia. Wow, all these names. Cat in, all you guys. Thank you for joining Hi guys. us. Hi. Oh. Um, so yeah, man. Oh, that was the that flaming, was the flaming lips. lips. That was the flaming lips we played for obvious reasons. Very obvious and obvious very reasons. disturbing. That, that, was, that, was Ju- that was Julia's call. Reasons. Oh wait, are these my glasses? I'm all over the place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hannibal. Okay, sorry. We're doing Hannibal right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here we are. And no, I just saw myself on the thing with glasses on. Okay. Uh, so Julia. So Brazzy. The number of the beast is six six six. Yeah. Episode 12? To that I say, duh. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, um, yeah, episode 12, the penultimate episode. Yep. Uh, of. I'm uh, so sad we didn't start with the number of the beast by Iron Maiden. Oh, oh. yeah. That's right. I ruined it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, no, well, I'm the sorry. Flaming I still are pretty, like Flaming Lips. Flaming I lips stand by the Flaming Lips flaming for this good. episode. Um, we have a, this was a, a great, well, this is not only the penultimate episode of the season, but the penultimate penultimate episode of the series. I'm heartbroken a little are, bit. I'm starting to panic, I feel Hello? like. Yeah, oh, Dua. Dua! Hi, Dua. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pop in like that. It's all right. <laughs> we're, we're, doing, we're doing a show. What's happening right now? Hey. All right, so let's do a Casey on the line. Dua, we're just talking. We're just getting into the, 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 the fact that we are almost to the end of the series. This is the penultimate of the series, not just the, not just the season. So we're very sad. I feel like I'm starting to panic a little bit that it's all going to be gone. It's all going to be over. What am I going to do? Yeah. I'm going to miss it. Well, this episode was, I thought this episode was great. This was a really, really good episode of Hannibal. Like probably one of the, one of the better episodes of Hannibal in a a long time, top to bottom. Uh, had all the stuff we want in Hannibal. We had all Mm -hmm. the suspense. We had the gore. Um, we had, you know, Hannibal eating stuff. Uh, oh. Oh, I knew he was going to do that, uh, too. This episode, dude, um, um, Julie and I were talking off mic on how this episode was super scary and how I may or may not have covered my eyes like a girl <laughs> um, in certain parts. And uh, what did you think of this episode, Duo? Were you scared? Or were you like, hey? I'm not, well, I'm not as, I'm not, no. You're not I a pussy? I wasn't scared at all. I, I, I loved this episode. <laughs> I loved that it was kind of bookended with like Bedelia and Will. Um, yeah, I sure. love that because you get you know you get that really cool rich um, dialogue, and then you also you know you had um, the I, lo- I I I mean we'll get into it a little bit later, but I absolutely loved that Chilton was the person that they used, and I love that he was there. <laughs> and I just thought that was kind of hilarious. But yeah, it had it had you're right. It had a little bit of everything. It had you know Hannibal at his at his best, you know, being manipulative and conniving. It was awesome. Yeah, it was it was it was it was very good good stuff. And uh, you know, Ch- Chilton finally, Doctor uh, High King shit crap weasel crap weasel fish finally got his just desserts. Poor guy, why can't he just die? You know, I <laughs> know, like he's things really things all these awful him, things happen to him. He just won't die. Won't die. And, uh, I want to start, say first, and I really like what what Fuller and uh, Lightfoot have done with this with the canon here because I thought, you know, we talked about last week how I thought that that would be the season finale, what happened last week, but in fact, we had two episodes to go. The way they flipped this whole thing around and still set up the whole that scene where they uh, they draw the dragon out, but they put mm-hmm. a little spin on it. It wasn't a drawing of 
out to the family necessarily. It was drawing them out. Wait, were they, they, that, cause that, that happened in the book where, where they where, where they. Uh, it happened to Freddie Lowndes in the book. But in, but but they made the FBI made Freddie Lowndes write that, and then they kidnapped Freddie Lowndes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the book. Will wasn't necessarily a part of that in the photo. Oh, it wasn't. It wasn't. The touch. T- yeah, the touch, and that was kind of a cool touch. I mean, literally. And um, also, yeah, to make that happen to Chilton as opposed to mm-hmm. Freddie. Is Freddie going to get away with this? Get out of this unscathed? Probably. She always does. Wow. I mean, like she's there yeah, because she dies. And, she you know. always does. But um, this was a cool episode. It was this a cool episode, episode. I don't know. I, when it first started off in that I, like big long conversation back and forth between Will and Bedelia yeah. and I was like oh god here we go again let's just do something so I I thought it was like one of the Bluebeard's loftiest wife conversations and Rucka, Rucka, Rucka. they've had on this show yet yeah. and it set me up in a way that I was like well this is a letdown but then you got but going. then well, well, let's talk about that conversation for one second because I mean, they, 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 there was a couple of there was a couple of things that happened. One thing in particular that happened that I thought was really great for the for the series is that they really, you know, like in season one, we talked a lot to Brian Fuller and about sort of this this bromance actually being a mm-hmm. romance. And then in season two, we like, wow, they really love each other, and that you know, I've been sort of proponent of like these guys are in love, and this is a romance, and this is not so thinly veiled. And and finally, at the end of season three, I mean, at the end of the series, but Delia comes right out and says it. Like, she's, you know, she basically says, you know, Hannibal, you think Hannibal, Hannibal's in love with you? Yeah. This is what's going on. And are you, do you love him? Yeah, do you ache for him? Yeah, and he's like, er, uh, sort of. uh, I mean, I guess. <laughs> a little bit. So that Can't was, admit it. but <laughs> I thought that was really sort of a cool, that was really cool. I mean, I think it's really a neat thing to do. And in all this bit, this whole bit about Bluebeard's wife, um, I mean, for those of you who don't know, and I don't know why you would, the, the Bluebeard story, I think it was like, he, he, Killed his first wife and then put her in some like closet or in some thing, and then kept marrying all these other women. And then every time the woman would ask what's in the closet, he says, "Don't look in there." When she looks in there, he'd kill her too until he had a whole bunch of people in the closet. Yeah. But then the last, the last wife was the one who said, "I'm an outsmart bluebeard." This is what uh, Bedelia thinks she is referencing. It's like she's she's the last. She's one. the last wife. And she's so, gonna survive. Right. And then there's a little, but it's also that little bit of jealousy between like between her and Will. I thought. Sense that too. I, yeah. I got that as well. Which, which, which was kind of cool. Like Bedelia sort of saying, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, she's a valiant woman who's gonna do, you know, who's gonna sort of like, uh, you know, who, who's there to sort of stop Hannibal or, or, or not or not be taken in by Hannibal. And I forget what that line was. Not forget because I didn't write it down because I'm stupid. But uh, there was some jealousy there back and forth. I don't know. Do how did you how did you read that scene? Well, the scene, well, what really stood out to me at that scene is when Bedelia said, and it was, I almost sensed, I mean, I sensed a lot of anger from Will, but Bedelia said, Hannibal gave you three years to build a family, confident that he will take them from you. Right. And the word gave in that sentence really kind of shows how Bedelia holds Hannibal in this incredibly high esteem and just makes it sound like this was Hannibal's end game the entire time. Like, I knew that Will was going to, you know, pull himself away from me, and I knew that Will was going to start his own life, and I knew that eventually he would come back, and I knew that I could, that I would now have, you know, le- he would now have this, like, family that I could take away from him. Like, that, I mean, that, to, to for Bedelia to think that that was Hannibal's entire scheme the whole time, like, that holds him in this, like, godlike, you know, like God, like it's just it's it's interesting. Well, I think it was his end game the whole time. You know, I, I agree with what she's saying. He gave himself up. He put himself in jail basically, yeah. and he literally did give that time to Will because Will would never have settled if Hannibal were out in the world. Right. I don't believe so. In being confined to this cell, it sort of gave Will a sense of confidence that he could take away. Yeah, I I, I agree. Wholeheartedly. 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 So, uh, so we, so after we have this in the aftermath. Oh, and we should talk about which is really interesting in the aftermath of Will's family being, you know, escaping and almost dying. Will is is, is haunted by this visions of him being the one, him being the dragon, him sort of standing over Molly's. Uh, you know, he missed himself seeing killing Mo- Molly as mm-hmm. Dragonwood. That's creepy. It's very creepy. And, you know, Alana sort of called him out on that um, yeah. and asked if he uh, was under the delusion that he's in control. Like, he lost himself yeah. before 
thought he was in control when he really wasn't. So is is this the same thing? Yeah, this is this, there's a lot of that seems to be the, the overarching arching theme of the whole episode of like, you know, again Hannibal still pulling the strings and Hannibal still being in control of not only Will and Bedelia to a certain degree, but obviously the Red Dragon and and even you know. Chilton and and on everyone, Hannibal's still really orchestrating the whole orchestrating thing. the whole thing. And I also thought it was really interesting because it, you know what we've seen the entire series is this this fine line, this fine tight rope Will walks between you know because this this completely <coughs> the way he profiles being able to completely empathize and go inside the head of the killer and sort of what that does to him and what that started, started how that started to erode his own personal self over the last three years. It's almost like the way he profiles takes his toll on him. Then he came into he came in contact with Hannibal, which clearly took a toll. Mm-hmm. Then he got encephalitis, which sucked. And then, you know, uh, and then now he's, he's I, I think he's barely, we saw what was happening to him at the beginning of the season where he, like, we're questioning his loyalties or what he's doing or, you know, if he wants to be with Hannibal, if he wants to kill. And I think we're still seeing that. I like the fact that we're seeing a guy who's really on the edge and it makes for a character that, we don't know. I feel like I still don't know what Will's going to do at any given moment, which I think is kind of cool. I don't think, no. Uh, yeah. Um, do, you, uh, do you, what do you What do you think about Will's uh, confession that he was going to kill his Molly? Or he, he found the solve himself killing Molly? Um, I, uh, hold on, remind me again, because I'm, I'm reading through my notes, and did I completely miss that? Yes. 100%? You clearly did, because it, it was at the, uh, what, well, the, oh, the, it was the very top of the show. Very, very beginning of the show. Like, that's how the show opened. Like he's basically. It's a, the sh- go ahead. Go, go through that again because I and I, if any of our viewers missed that as well because in my notes I have nothing about him. In the in the opening of the show, that. in the opening show, uh, Guillermo Navarro, who directed it, has this beautiful shot of Molly with the with the uh, the mirrors in her eyes and mouth, and it was. But we know Molly's alive, but it was a dead Molly, and it's sort of we see this as sort of a vision that Will keeps having, and then we we also it's revealed that I, he's in a session with Bedelia, and he says I, he sees himself killing Molly. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I missed that. I saw Alana with I saw Alana with the mirrors on her eyes. Oh no, that was that was Molly. Oh, that happens quickly too. Oh, yeah. I saw See, Alana like that. What was interesting is I saw that and I thought that that was Alana with the mirrors on her eyes. And what I took from that, that's really interesting that I missed that. Because what I took from that was that um, Hannibal was actually going to have the red dragon kill Alana in a way to keep his promise. Got it. Um, well, you saw, we saw both. We saw both Molly and Alana in that same sort of situation with the mirrors on their eyes and mouth. Right. Uh huh. So yeah, I mean, I would take I would take that as just foreshadowing, and it was just you know, it was just a way because you know, getting back to where, where Will has these visions, it's not necessarily for me thinking that Will is actually going to do it when Will sees it. I always think that it's just going to be done. Right. Right. Well, you know, it, I, I thought that was um, I, it. Just sort of speaks to this. I, what, I, what I what I view is this this, this tightrope that, that Will keeps walking, and it's dangerous. And I feel like. Uh, even going into this last episode, I don't. I'm not very confident as to what side Will's going to be on, no. or how this is going to how this is going to shake out. I mean, this is what's cool about television and stories nowadays. It's like, you know, I had the confidence of knowing, well, Will's our hero, and he's the FBI guy, and he's going to see see this through to the end. And now I'm like, I don't know. Maybe Will is going to go marry Hannibal. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> maybe Will's going to kill someone, and they'll be in a cell together, like in you know, forever. Like I don't. I have no idea what to expect at this point. Um, so. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you, um, Hades. Uh, will imagine himself as the dragon, which is which is which is cool too. Yeah. Um, all right. So uh, so then they, they 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 get together. They meaning Jack and Alana and Will. Uh, you know, having um, feel like there's nothing left to do. They devise this plan to sort of flush the dragon out mm-hmm. by uh, having Freddie Freddie Lowndes write an article and having uh, Doctor Chilton sort of be be the uh, the. I don't know the, the 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 credible source that helps instead of uh, valid make, give, makes this whole thing valid, and uh, yeah, they 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 do that. But before that, we see the scene between Hannibal and 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 Chilton, in oh, which yeah. you know Chilton Hannibal basically discredits all of what made what what got Han, what made Chilton rich and got real, Chilton. Um, the books and the, and the fame and everything else, Hannibal discredits him completely, mm-hmm. and Chilton doesn't like it. Chilton was pissed. Very pissed. <laughs> oh, God, well, Chilton. that's how. Oh, sorry. If I, if it's funny, if you want to, you know, if you want to upset Hannibal, you take away his dignity. If you want to upset 
children, you mess with his vanity. Yes. Without a doubt. Without a and doubt. and that is exactly what Hannibal was doing. And I thought that it was the really good little precursor and, and pre-scene to kind of set up. It's like, you know, don't forget about Chilton because they haven't seen him for a few episodes. Yeah. So um, to I, kind of remind you exactly where he is in his head. Yeah. You know, uh, that scene was perfect because then they used him as a pawn, which I thought was a brilliant idea. I was sitting there watching that scene, just like scream. I wanted to scream at my television. Shut up. Don't talk yeah. to Hannibal like that. Don't yeah. get cocky. Stop it. Stop it. Yeah. How, yeah, how, <laughs> what is, what are you how doing? does he think this is going to end? Oh, you this know, false sense of, of contentment and safety. Come and on, guys. He didn't really paint a very good picture for the uh, the, the criminally insane place. Where they keep people oh, no. like the young ones will. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and, um, I will say about um, Chilton, our guy Raul Esparza, this was like his episode. Yeah, man. He knocked it out of the park. You know, Raul Esparza, he's, yeah. he's done a great job with Chilton because you hate him and somehow you're oddly sympathetic of him. Yep. But like you, it's like it's weird. Like I, I don't, it's like a weird juxtaposition because you're like this guy is such a weasel, and then you're still like, ah, oh, but this guy, I don't know, not this guy, but like when he's getting eaten or when he's getting captured or when he's getting like you know when stuff's happening to him, I feel bad for him. Oh, I feel awful for him. I don't know. He's not a bad guy, you know. Yeah. He's not a murderer. He's not. I mean, he's just he's controlled by vanity, him fame, all these things that he wants to be and will never be, will never right. accomplish it. So then, yeah, you feel a little bad. Yeah. I'm like, oh, sorry, buddy, you just don't have the chops. You just uh, don't you know, got it. I think you touched on something really cool there, Dua, about Chilton's vanity because it's, it's it's odd that we've seen you know all the stuff that's happened to Chilton has to do with him taking away his you know something to do with his physical appearance. Um, he seems to be getting worse and worse and worse looking, and and you know, and although he fixed himself up pretty good for the top of season three, yeah. you know, I don't think he can fix himself up after what happened to oh, him. He's not looking so good. Oh, it was a little <laughs> nauseating. That, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. No. In a second. And it was what, really what nauseating. I, what I find interesting. Right, go ahead, do it. Um, what I find. What I find interesting is that this is actually before, you know, Silence of the Lambs. And we won't see, you know, they didn't get the rights to Silence of the Lambs, so we won't see that. But in Silence of the Lambs, he's still running this facility. And he's completely, totally fine in that movie. So yeah. it's interesting that they really do take the, the liberties and they'll go places that we don't think that they'll go. Like, I would have never thought that it would have happened. So I think that the you know keeping the ability to the element of surprise the story that we already know is really is really great. Yeah, because you know we, they didn't know. I mean, I'm assuming they didn't know that they weren't going to be back. I think this was pretty close to being. I mean, I know they're doing post on everything, but I think that I think it was all wrapped. I mean, you know, um, principal photography was all done, and so I think that. They, in other words, I guess they weren't trying to kill Chilton off because they, they, there could be a season four for all they knew. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be interesting to see how they would bring Chilton back if, if there well, were. <laughs> they didn't kill him. Yeah, they did not know? kill him. They, 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 they did, they did hold true to the books. Do they did not kill him? Uh, anywho, um, yeah, the young ones would use you for sex. That, that was gross. That was really um, gross. All right, so. Uh, so so that happened. Then they, they go back and they, they they set him up with this elaborate sort of uh, article, mm -hmm. and then Will artfully puts his hand on 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 Chilton, uh, which I thought nothing of at the time. Did you think? Did you make? Did you, when that no, happened? I just thought it was for authenticity. You know, right. I thought it was just for to make a pretty picture. Did you think anything of that, Dua? Not a not a clue. All right. Are you kidding? I missed the whole thing with Molly. You think I caught that? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That one little bit. Come on now. Um, and so what I did like, you know, again, I think you know, my guy uh, Guillermo Navarro directed this episode. With that scene when uh, Chilton is sort of kidnapped by the dragon, I thought was one of like one of the most fa one, it's one of my favorite like sequences. It's a very small sequence, but that shot of him walking up with the two bodyguards, getting in the car, and the two bodyguards, it's like pop, pop, like spot, spot. Mm -hmm. It's all silent yep. with the silencer, and then gets in the car, and, and the, red, the, wind, sorry, the red dragon snatches him out. That was really cool. That was like, that was, I think that was really well done. Uh, and also very eerie and scary, too. It was very, you know, it's hard to make, um, you know, gunshot like that, like scary, you know, because usually you get knives or something, you know, but like, I, I don't know, I thought that was a really cool scene, a um, little, little moment. But go ahead, do a. Gonna... He's like 007. He was. He kind of yeah. is. He He's is. a silencer. And yeah. I don't know. Yeah. He was like that yeah. when he was attacking uh, Molly and 
Yeah, Why? like I said, he's like he, he, there's like the born identity in there. Like I was saying, like how did he? He's got skills, right? So uh, he does, and um, he takes Kilton back, and then we see the that that very familiar scene, which is pretty much as the as, as we see it, as we know it from the book, and also as we know it from Red Dragon. Except in this time, it's not Freddie Lowndes. The whole thing of yeah. you know making him, you know, do you know who I am? Uh, look at me, should take a look at me. But uh, again, props to you know Armitage, like he's scary. He's like really all, that whole, I mean that that scene between him, that long ass scene between him and Chilton, where he's like talking to Chilton in that dragon voice and and creeping around and doing his thing. That was that was scary, right? Um, it was terrifying, and um, more <laughs> than Armitage, in my opinion, was the performance um, by yeah. Mel Esparza. He his terror was so palpable. Um, just it was just a phenomenal, a phenomenal work that he was doing. That it made me feel that fear. It brought my fear to a, a heightened level. I was freaked the f yeah. out. Yeah, and I, I will say this: props. This is how good these two guys were. It's like this is really we're watching just two guys in a room. Mm-hmm. So almost everything mm-hmm. we that was brought to that scene, everything we felt from, uh, you know, from the Tooth Fairy of the Dragon uh, or uh, Dollar Hyde, everything we felt from Chilton was given to us by these two actors. And, I mean, you know, obviously the, you know, some camera settings, some music and everything else. But for the most part, I mean, it, it was just them. And that's pretty remarkable, right? It was absolutely remarkable. And I feel like you could really see in, uh, in Esparza's um, performance see his his psychology working and right. what he was going to do and how he was going to approach this through his fear and how he handled uh, the red dragon speaking to him and you could see those wheels turning yeah. when he made these choices and the lines that he that exactly. he said exactly I was like you are freaking awesome yeah. little toward force there oh, my friend man Raul Sparza I, uh, I mean dude, you don't get scared about anything but what do you think of this <laughs> Well, I think that's a really good point that you brought up, though, Joe. It's like to, for, you know, uh, when you're a good actor, you make it seem so effortless. But for two guys to really carry a scene like that and to really evoke emotion from an audience and make things seem that organic, like that's not an easy task. That takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of energy and it's exhausting. Um, so, I mean, I definitely think that giving them their due credit is important. Uh, I have one question about that scene, though. Did um, uh, Ruby was she supposed to, was she in the original movie? Did she stop by during that Reba? scene? Reba, because I felt like that definitely brought the scene to an interesting, almost comedic halt. Uh, yeah, you know, it's like you're in the middle, you're in the middle of this like crazed, you know, maniacal episode, and then all of a sudden it's like ding dong, I have soup. Right, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that does happen. But I don't. I don't remember the context. I don't either. It's been so long. Yeah. Um, I thought. Yeah, it, it definitely disrupted the scene. But I thought it was such an interesting uh, thing to have. I, I didn't think that Chilton was going to be in the same room as them. You know, I thought he was going to be somewhere in the attic or something like that. So to have him witness the sort of transition from this guy being the dragon and and talking about you know my art and what you owe me and and then all of a sudden he becomes a man in front of this woman all right uh it's, mm-hmm. it's Steve, fascinating to watch that Stephen Elliott you 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 know everything about about the the whole series and the, and the movies was that or all you guys in the chat room was that scene when when Re, when Reba comes in was that actually in the book or the movie was it like that I don't remember I don't, I don't remember, remember that either. whole sequence in there uh, someone in the chat room can help, help us out on that one. But uh, in the novel, Francis meets Reba after he kills Lons. Thank you, Stephen. I need, you, before I even asked him, he had it up there. Done and done. All right. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Uh, wait. Uh, oh, thank you. It's, 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 it's Fixia says it as well. All right, uh, cool. So does Hades. All right, everybody's all right, got, cool. okay. Got all right, it. We're happens. all on the same page. <laughs> um, all right, so um, yeah, that that was it, was it was comedic and it was cool, but it also was it was is more scary to me. I thought it was eerie. It was eerie and, and and terrifying and and look, you know, Chilton didn't say a word. He kind of looked observing this whole thing again. Smart those move. wheels turning though, yep. like seeing him seeing him take all that in, and I just I. You know, know, and knowing like that, what what the possible fate, what the fate was of Freddie Lowndes in the book and in the movie, mm-hmm. and knowing that there's no way after Chilton is going to get out of this okay, I was still like that moment of like relief, like okay, he did it, he's going to let him go. That's all fine. It's, everything's fine. <laughs> I thought everything was fine too. And then he puts on the mask. And he puts the teeth and in. Puts the teeth in, and, and he starts then crawling. The crawl. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, yeah, that that was that was eerie. And then yeah, I, I I agree with with chat room here. I don't. I've seen a lot. We've seen a lot in this in the series in the tenure of this series. I'm like upset right now. But that <laughs> that has to be the. I mean, well, there was Mason. There was Mason Verger's chop eating his own face or chopping his own face up. That was pretty gross. I'm but full of myself. I'm full of myself. <laughs> yes, I'm full of myself. <laughs> uh, but that this is probably the grossest thing I can I can remember happening on Hannibal. This is by far the grossest thing. This is pretty and gross. It wasn't just gross; it was really scary. It was the scary. Gr- this thing. is high because level. Everything that Hannibal rated R did, gore. Everything that Hannibal did, like for example, with Mason Verger's face, right. he did it with this sort of confidence and bemusement about right. what was happening. So it sort of lightened the, That's good the point. air a bit. That's great point. This was just fearful. Yeah, this, this was is this is terror. violence. Yeah, this was. Awful. Yeah, and so uh, so what we're talking about is, uh, you know, as, as you guys all know, listening and watching to this, you know, he bites off his lips and bites Ugh. his face, and in a very graphic way, and then but then we see it pull away, and then we see the result, which was gross, and then we see him spit the lips into his hand, like no. Anyway, that all happened. It's pretty. It's pretty graphic for NBC. <laughs> I'll give you that. Uh, yeah, grosser, is, than, grosser than the baby and the pig for me, Stephen. Yeah, that was just gross. Go ahead. Oh yeah, what, yeah. definitely grosser this than the pig. This is what I don't. This is what I don't understand. Why, after all of that, did Alana hand a package to Hannibal? I have a package for you, and actually give him, let him open it. Like, wouldn't they have held that and opened it themselves so they could analyze it? Well, they like, don't did. you know what Hannibal's going to do with a pair of lips? Well, no, stop it, stop it. They did uh, knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> they did. This is how I deal with things with humor. <laughs> they, uh, they did do the bit where they showed the package being X-rayed and kind of gone through mm-hmm. and la la la. So we did get a sense that you know they, they it's, it's put through its paces. <laughs> they didn't just hand it over to him. I guess we're supposed to believe Dua that this is we. They want to see. They're learning from Hannibal. They're learning you know from Hannibal, and so they want to see him interact with whatever this thing is, so they can learn more about where the Tooth Fairy is. I'm assuming this is what it is. And then and then even they tried to like clean it up when she's like, "Can I have some privacy and open this?" And she's he's like, mm-hmm. "Absolutely not. You know, no." So that was cool. You I don't know. know. I, that, that thought crossed my mind, too. And I was wondering if, you know, when you're incarcerated, if you still, uh, I mean, if it's still like a federal offense to open someone else's mail. Oh. Oh, that's a good point. Oh, wow. That's true. Hmm. We don't want to get in trouble with the feds. Okay, Here you go, no. Hannibal. <laughs> <laughs> we do things by the book here. We're going to the book. Yes. You open your own mail. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Uh, so... Yeah, and then obviously he checks it out. There's two lips in there. They're all cleaned up. With these, he offended me. With these, he offended me. The lips. And then, uh, you know, Hannibal ate one. Don't do it. And I'll ate one. Which, which, <laughs> do it so like which, which was like that, that little bit that Nads did was scary and humorous. And it was almost almost a little nod to, uh, to uh, Silence of the Lambs. Oh, the fava beans? Yes, the fava beans and a bit of Chianti. It's almost a little nod to that. So oh, that, so oh, that, that was that too. creative. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was kind of cool. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, and, and but, like, but he's still cooperating. He's like, hey, man, you only need one. It's, it's all, the, all the information you need is in the other lip. I just had to have one. Duh. So, uh, so he did get to eat Chilton. I mean, I mean, yeah. he's, 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 didn't he get to him before, though, right? Did he, no, that was. I don't think so, no, because Chilton was shot. Shot, that's right. Uh, so yeah, so that was that, that happened, and uh, I don't know, man. That was uh, okay. We, we get the idea. That was scary. So um, <laughs> I knew he was gonna do that too. I knew it. I knew yeah. he was gonna suck up one of those lips. Yeah, that was that. So then they, they and g- I did love the line when he's talking to Alana about it, and you know, asking why they sent Chilton in instead of her. She could have easily have done it. And then when he said, "I could have," oh, those could have been uh, your lips. I was tasting again. Oh. Again, I miss that. Cause they they were lost. I know, digmatized. Digmatized. I miss that line. That's a great line. Yeah. Such a good line. Damn it. And yes. now I will never well, get that that one brief moment, that quick shot of him sucking up that lip. I will never get it out of my head. Yes, do I? Go ahead. <laughs> well, it's um it's interesting because when he brought that, when he said that line about Alana. You know, it made me cut back to the scene where Will asks Alana, he's like, you know, would you be willing to do that? And she's like, nope. Yeah. And yeah. so Hannibal knew that that would be her answer, and he knew that they would have to find somebody else, too. And then they knew at the end that 
crap weasel would be so about it because he's vain. What they're going to do with story? Of course, right. I have expertise. So it's like he knew this. It just shows like how you know what it could have been yours, but no, you were going to say no. Right. Um, so it just shows again. It goes back to almost the very very beginning of the episode with Bedelia and Will right. with that line. Hannibal gave you three years with the whole like he's the puppet master to this whole thing. He's in prison and he's still. Working you guys. Well, yeah, let's talk about that. So she has a, it kind of goes back to this, uh, um, you know, the, this session with with Will and Bedelia. And yeah, she, she, you know, the whole idea of like Hannibal Lecter does have agency in the world. Like you, like he's still like, you know, you're you're doing his bidding. Like you put your hand on Chilton's, you know, uh, shoulder. Like you're doing Hannibal's work. And it's very reminiscent of like, this is the number of the devil. Like you're out there doing the devil's work. The devil's <laughs> locked down there in his pit. And somehow he's his influence is still you know out you know extending out to man and man is doing his bidding and you know and that that's very much how this whole thing is and it's really interesting that juxtaposition of like you know that that that, that thought of Hannibal being the devil you know being personified as the devil and and, and doing his work through these other people uh, it's really I don't know it's really scary and interesting to me I don't know but um, yeah Will is I mean Will is doing Will Will is Hannibal's boy. Oh, yeah. Well, he's the, what are they called? The mm-hmm. Lamb of God. And he's turning into the lion. Yes. I mean, they, yeah. they gave everyone yeah. very specific characters. They gave um, they gave uh, Hannibal the devil. Yep. They gave Will the Lamb of God. And they gave Jack God. God. Jack, and Jack didn't, yep. didn't shy away from God either. No, he liked it. Jack's like, yeah, I'm God. <laughs> it's like, so that's right. I mean, they're living up to their to their potential. Yeah. And he's calling it. He knows. And uh, we're all trudging through his inferno. Yeah. Yeah, yep. man. And you know, all God's demand sacrifice. It was an interesting scene, that last scene with Bedelia, when she sort of calls Will out. Um, you know, she says, you weren't surprised this happened. You might as well let the match. And that's participation. And if right. you remember back in Florence, yes. when Hannibal put her in a very similar situation and she was a participant. Right. I, I think it's this interesting thing how how Will has been, you know, Will and, and Bedelia are so far apart at all. I think this is what, what Bedelia is trying to get Will to see, because Will, towards the beginning of this back half Red Dragon, has very much looked at Bedelia like, you you were with Hannibal, and you were right with him, and you mm-hmm. murdered people too, and you're a horrible person. And even still, even in these sessions, it's like, don't you know, lecture me, you were with Hannibal. And she's kind of like, look, dude, you're doing the same shit. Mm-hmm. Like, you're the same dude. A, he's in love with you, you're in love with him, like, you're doing his bidding, like, you're participating, so shut the F up. Yep. And I'm with her on that, right? I think I mean, that's really how she mm-hmm. said it too, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like that. That's why I heard it. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's cool. And, and I like, again, the addition of this character, Bedelia, who doesn't exist in, the, in, in any of the other things. I think she is, um, I think she exists as, the way I saw her today, I found I was like, oh, that's what Bedelia's are doing. All of this stuff that I feel like Brian Fuller's adding in, like sort of the love story and then the tightrope of Will and kind of this, this the, 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 the relationship between Will and Hannibal, that Brian, the Brian Fuller, Fuller version, which is really close. It's like, uh, you know, with Will losing himself between, you know, who he is and Hannibal and maybe falling in love and this back and forth. And, and then also what Bedelia did and this new version of Hannibal as this sort of like devil, as the devil, who's, who's this puppet master. Who's, who's controlling everything, but Delia represents that the storyteller to us. She represents that person who, who sort of lets the audience know again what's happening um, along this Brian Fuller canon, I believe, because like these sessions sort of spell the whole thing out. Like every, every time we've seen Bedelia in this back half of the episode, she's spelled out and, 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 and sort of given, um, uh, well, it, it has given validity to the way Brian Fuller has told this story, if I'm making any sense whatsoever. I don't know if I am. But <laughs> I don't know if you are. Either. I don't know if I am either. <laughs> I feel like, let me try this one more time. Brian Fuller has added this whole different arc with Will and Hannibal and, you know, the, their relationship and everything else. And I feel like Bedelia, who's a character who doesn't exist in the Thomas Harris canon or I- at all, is there to sort of, like, support what Brian Fuller has said and, 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 and given us about Will and Hannibal. So if, if it's, it's in other words, if you don't understand what's happening there, but Delia has made it very clear in this episode, this is what's happening with you. You're in love with him. He's using you. This is what's going on with you. He did the same thing for me. So shut up. That's kind of what I'm saying. Does that make more sense or less sense? A little bit. All right. I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah. More sense in the first <laughs> time. Well, you missed out. You can't have... 
you can't have those scenes with Will and Hannibal anymore because the dynamic has changed. Right. So especially that Will has such a you know interesting mind, you kind of need that. You need him to have like it. Look, it almost seemed to me when Bedelia and him were at a session, they were like he like. He has like these weekly sessions with her because now he's so distraught about what's going on that he needs to kind of hash it out. And it also right. gives them such a, a an ability to you know come up with this rich dialogue. Like the second scene with Bedelia and Will, they say the divine punishment of a sinner mirrors the sin being punished. And he's talking about Chilton, and that's just I mean that's great. Yeah, it's excellent writing. Yeah, fantastic writing. Um, so after that. Um, then we, then Will has to go and see, Jack and Will have to go see, uh, then we have that weird scene of like g- getting to see what actually happened to Chilton where we, where that we see that he's burned and that we, we see his horrible lipless face again, Duh. this time on fire, like yeah. the ghost rider. Um, but before we see that, we see the video. Oh yeah. We can't video. forget the video the and video. all my notes say are, oh shit, Will. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh shit, man. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Um, and his his reaction to that was an interesting reaction. That's not we haven't seen Will be that moved before. I don't know if it was guilt or fear or everything wrapped into one. But when he saw the dragon come at uh, Chilton and yeah. tear his lips off, and the way he just sort of collapsed yeah. was really interesting. We've never seen that from Will. Yeah. He's very stoic. Well, I think that it, it shows that he, it will is not just a cold blooded kill. I mean, he did that move, put his hand on the shoulder to see what would happen. He kind of wanted to see something mm-hmm. happen, but actually, now that he actually physically saw the results, mm-hmm. like he's like, no, I don't, I didn't want this. He doesn't often see the murder, you know. He's, exactly. he's an aftermath kind of guy. He yeah. sees it in his head. Yeah, that's good. It's a great point. It's a great point. Um, do we have anything to add on that on the video? Um, no, I, I think that I think that uh, Julia said it all with the uh, oh shit, oh shit, Will, oh shit. <laughs> what are you gonna right. do, man? What are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna do, bro? Gotcha. <laughs> what are you yeah. gonna do, man? <laughs> um, so so then we have Will and and, and Jack uh, in their conversation, uh, and and I, and Jack is, I mean, Will is very, you know, Will is kind of pissed at Jack. Like he's very. I mean, I realized in this episode, he's not like Jack's my buddy. He's still mad that like he's very much well aware that Jack is using Will and's been using Will and just to just as a means to no matter, no matter what it does to Will or Will's family or whatever it is, he's bringing it as a means to get the job done. And we see in this episode that Will's kind of like I, at least I got that. Well, Will was just kind of like seemed a little pissed at Jack. Yeah, he seems a little pissed, but he kind of did the same exact thing to Chilton. Yeah, yeah. Can't be that mad. He did. Uh, so they go in there and they 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 have the conversation with uh, with uh, Chilton, Lipless who doesn't McGee. doesn't look so hot. No, no, yeah. he does not. Yeah, I mean, he's got the, no lips. And props to to Will for being able to decipher. Like I, I had the headphones in, my eyes closed. I didn't know what the f he was talking about. He's like, ar, 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 ar. I was like, oh yeah, black lady, she's blind. I'm like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he says it's all my fault. I did it on purpose. Like what? <laughs> it's like the uh, the old the old peanuts version with the with the the teacher in the background. <laughs> like stop it. That was really I don't know. But um, yeah. And even Jack was like, even Jack was like, what did he say? I was like, oh, not not even a beat missed. Oh, he said black woman blind, Reba. <laughs> like there's no lips. Anyway. Um, so yeah, that was any anything that anything any insight to that scene other than it was gross. That was a painful scene to watch to to have. Well, first the fact that Chilton survived is just a bummer. Like just put him out of his misery. Yeah. And then for him to call Will out, you know, you set me up, you put your hand on my shoulder, um, like this is all your fault. But right. he still. Gave them valuable information, which right. was nice. Right. You know, he wasn't all vengeful about it, which I probably would have been. Kept that information myself. You yeah. get to know about the black blind lady. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so at least they're onto something. Well, and then now we know. And so now, now we they have all the information. Mm-hmm. So now they can they can find Dollar Hyde. So we 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 kind of know where this is going. I mean, and now they're going to go get Dollar Hyde, kind of, but. Uh, well, of course, we see that last scene where Dollar Hyde kidnaps Reba and yeah. in the van and confesses that he's the, back, uh, the black dragon, the red dragon mm-hmm. to the black blind lady. He confesses. And that scene also very, very terrifying. 
to me. I don't know. I was scared. I mean, like, what's weird about this? I'm 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 really afraid of the Red Dragon. I'm just kind of, <laughs> I, dollar hide, not so much. Red Dragon scares the shit out of me. I'm just gonna say, like, see when he's in that voice and the teeth come in, he's doing his thing. Oh, the teeth. Like that dude scares me. I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm I'm, I'm man enough to admit it. I know it didn't scare you, Dua, but he scares me. Uh, and well, then, I mean, I was scared for Reba because think about her. You know, it being like, how would it feel to somebody that is completely blind who has gotten feelings for somebody and now she knows now does she know that this is because what was interesting was as he kidnapped her and he's taking through to the house they did a very distinct thing they did a shot of the flowers and they did a shot of something else that makes noise almost signifying to her that she's picking up on these cues. Yeah. Now, does she know that she's actually in Dollar Hyde's house? Like, yeah. can she sense? Yeah, she knows. I'm sure she's she at does. Dollar Hyde's house. She knows. And that he, the guy that she had a crush on, was now the Red Dragon. Yeah, no, I mean, I think... You know that, what I'm saying? Yeah, but I think that she... I don't think she knew that uh, until he told her that. There's a weird thing where it was like, hey, I didn't know you cared about me so much, but you don't have to tie me up. You can just talk to me. I mean, did she think he was doing some sort of kinky move no i think she was scared and trying <laughs> and to trying to like calm him down yeah, like oh oh see it's all fine maybe sort of appeal yeah. to his to his senses and, and he, what they had before and just to get it. the f out of there yeah he's like no it's not fine because i'm the dragon <laughs> like, yeah. i'm the red dragon the <laughs> yeah. you know, that family over here that family over there that's what happened um yeah uh so now i mean this leads us to sort of like where we end up here where where is this thing going because like, this is the penultimate. Left. We have one left. I don't think it's a two-hour episode. I don't think it's an extended episode. We kind of have a lot to get done yeah. here, right? So, I mean, I guess we can just move over into predictions right now and, and kind of... And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. Um, well, this is it. Uh, this is this is our, this is what our, our almost our final prediction of the entire Hannibal series. Yeah, it is. Well, so, maybe. We'll see what happens next week. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Who knows. Uh, but, like, wh- I don't know. Like, So we have, so we know that Will is going to, Will and Jack know where Dollar Hyde is. Yes. They're going to go and find him and, and have this final confrontation. It's not the confrontation that we thought it was going to be because it already happened last ep- two, two episodes ago or last episode. Yep. So this is an entirely new written con- confrontation that we don't know what's going to happen. We also have Freddie Lowndes, who's still alive, who you know, and the book is dead, so maybe she dies. We'll see how that happens. Mm-hmm. We still have uh, Alana Bloom, who many of us speculated is, may or may not make it. Um, She's not gonna make it. We have Bedelia, who, who, and there's that scene, oh, that's what the, that, that jealousy thing was, when she's like, he's he's supposed to eat me. Um, when that whole bit about like, I'm safe because Hannibal's gonna, gonna kill me himself, and only if he can eat me. And he can't eat me, so I'm safe. I think there was a, um, there was a line there that made me, that, that was about, Never mind, I forget. Anyway, Bedelia, she's still around. Mm-hmm. She may be eaten. Okay. Um, and Hannibal's in jail, being Hannibal pulling the strings. What's going to happen? Is Hannibal going to get out? He's going to get out somehow. He's going to get out and be there in the mix. I don't know. Are him and Will going to make out? <laughs> Finally. Is he going to? Is he going to eat Bedelia? Is he going to like kill <laughs> Freddie Lowndes? Like, what the what f is going to happen? <laughs> do, do, do you want to go first? Go. Do you have any predictions? <laughs> Um, I I think that the Red Dragon is going to kill Alana based on that. I mean, I thought that would have been a brilliant way to kind of twist things around. Mm-hmm. But I also think that if uh, Hannibal's going to escape, he's probably going to kill Alana himself while doing it. Huh. You know, so I I don't know. I don't know. This is tricky. I think Alana has but, to die at Hannibal's hands. Yeah, that's poetic justice. Yeah, yeah. We all think Alana's right. gonna die. Huh? Yeah, we're, we're convinced. I know it. All I right. feel it in my soul. And what about Freddie? I think she's fine. She'll go off doing her own thing. No, you think Freddie's not gonna make it? I mean, you think Freddie's gonna be? A, yeah, gonna make I it? won't make it. Freddie will I always make it. it. Okay. Uh, what, what about? I, I still think that Molly's gonna die. Okay. Um, yeah, and then I think that um, I think that the son has to kill Dollarhide. I mean, Dollarhide has to die this next episode, right? I, I, I think we've seen the last of Molly and the son. I think that was it. I think we're not going to see them anymore. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that right. they're not going to come back. There's not enough room. I just don't know what's going to happen with Will. That's what I can't. Yeah, is Will, is Will going to be 
go crazy and be weird. I mean, he's on the cusp. Is Will going to eat something? He's not in control. Yes. Now, I he's will breaking s- down again. I will say this. This is Here's a theory that I'll, I'll throw out there. Oh. At the end of the book, in Hannibal the book, like, Hannibal uh, manages to sort of like, he, he it, whatever, Hannibal and Clarice end up together. Yeah. They end up together in the book. Like after after all this time of, of her hunting Hannibal and the back and forth and everything else and they're eating brains and doing it, they end up together in this. And like so maybe, just maybe, since there is no Silence of the Lambs arc, and since we did mix a lot of the book Hannibal in the beginning of this season, maybe the end of this we'll see Hannibal and Will somehow together. Oh. Maybe 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 Will is Clarice in this. I would like that. That would that would be good for me. I I, I, I appreciate I, that. I think that, that could I think that that's a possibility. That's what I'm going with. I think I'm going with that. Okay. I think I'm going with Hannibal well, and Will about, together. What about Hannibal and Bedelia? What about Bedelia takes the Clarice role? Nah. Nah. I think Bedelia okay. I, Bedelia <laughs> Bedelia's gotta get I think I, I think I think I think Will and Hannibal eat Bedelia. Ooh, yeah. oh, I'm loving your predictions. Ooh. Yeah, I think, I think Will and Hannibal eat Bedelia. I think they that's what's going to happen. Dine together on Bedelia. And I don't know what's going to happen to Jack and the gang, but the, I think Hannibal and Will will be off in the sunset together. And there will be, and there'll be no mention of Clarice and no mention of uh, my man, the other killer, the lamb, talent the lambs dude. What's his oh, name? Buffalo Bill. Buffalo Bill. None of that's going to happen. That's my prediction. Let's see okay. if can do it. I like it. I did think of Buffalo Bill in this episode, though, when he, when Dollar High was wearing the big robe. Yeah, and also the, and was like, uh, and the very effeminate robe. The robe, and also someone in the chat room mentioned the crawl, the way he crawled over the couch. Felt also very Buffalo Bill like. Maybe there's some sort of you know, nods to Buffalo Bill there, too. Uh, there's one of the lines. <laughs> someone mentioned that there was a line from Silence, the book Silence of the Lambs in this, in this, um, oh. in this episode, too. So there's a lot of sort of like Easter eggs and nods to Silence of the Lambs without actually being able to. Talk about the characters in Silence of the Lambs. Also, the orderly, uh, we can't, Barney, the orderly, uh, played by Frankie Faison, is not in, can't, can't be in this in this series, but they do have the black lady orderly. I don't know if her name is Frederica or whatever, but she, <laughs> <laughs> but whatever. Uh, but uh, Barney, I don't know, but she was, uh, yeah, she was, I don't know. She's there. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, that's all I got. I don't know. I got nothing else. One I'm, more. I'm, I'm very excited about this last episode. Um, our chat room took a Took crap. <laughs> it's been it's been acting up, and people in the chat room have said so too. So I'm sorry, oh, guys. Sorry, but guys. thank you, thank you for all joining us. Um, I don't know. That's all I have. Do uh, where where can the people find you? Um, you can find me on Twitter's at Dua Casey D U A K A I S S I. It puts the lotion on the skin. Oh, look at that! Oh. I don't know why I said that. I just Fine. I just felt like saying that. I don't know why. All right, there it is. <laughs> Julia? It does whenever it's told. Uh, yes. uh, you can <laughs> find me on Twitter and on Instagram with my name, Julia Carley, J U L I A C E A R L E Y. And I'm Joe Braswell. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and Periscope at Joe K. Braswell and, and our sister network, uh, Black Hollywood Live, doing a show called Geek Nerd Tech. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back for the last and final Hannibal. And we'll see if all my predictions will come true. Thanks for joining us in the chat room, on iTunes, and on YouTube. And we'll see you next week. From executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 